Hi, this is David Floyer. I'm back at the Open Power Summit here in San Jose. And I'm very proud to have with me Brad McCready uh, from IBM. He is the guy who started off Open Power and started off uh, all of the work on the Power 8 and Power 9. So thanks very much for being here. Yeah, great to be here, Dave. It's a good day. Great. Well, uh, can you tell me a little bit more about uh, the announcements you've made? Uh, I read that Google had an announcement and maybe that you needed to catch up a bit. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> well, if Google was going to talk about Power 9, we better talk about it first, or at least <laughs> tell the industry that it exists. So we did a series of keynotes here today where uh, I talked about our Power Roadmap, uh, provided uh, you know our Power 8, Power 8 with NVLink, and then Power 9, some details on that. And then um, Google, of course, then did follow that up with their, their discussion on how they're partnering with Rackspace to build Power 9 systems on the open compute platform. And you know, we also emphasize a lot the accelerated computing. We think that's really important here as we're entering this era of uh, you know, the, the demise or whatever we want to say of Moore's Law. You know, and Rackspace talked about that. You know, we showed we had a lot of new accelerator buses on Power 9, and uh, Rackspace is uh, leveraging those in some of their future development efforts as well. Well, you know, congratulations uh, on, on what has happened to Open Power compared with 214, 215, yeah. and now it's, uh, it's, what is it, 60 announcements uh, this yeah, yeah. today. Got them all sitting out over here, you know, our 59 uh, new products. Oh, 59, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I should have let you round up. I should have let you round up. You're right. Yeah, 60. <laughs> so, um, what, all those years ago, what was it that made you start this whole project of the Open Power? Oh, it, it's, um, we kind of talked about it. You know, there's, there's, there's a couple of major forces playing on the industry right now. And one of the major forces is, of course, as we talked about, the waning of Moore's Law. So S Moore's Law fueled so much of the cost performance takedown that our clients need. But by Moore's Law, you mean the speed part of it. There's well, still the transistor part of it. Well, it seems to be going strong as well. Well, really what it is, is it's an economic statement. It's cost performance. And that's what's waning, you know. And we had a lot of charts that were shown today, and a lot of charts have been shown over the past years that you know that cost performance takedown is not there. So what are we doing? We're doing all sorts of new innovation to make up for that slack. Nobody showed up and said, you know what? I don't need my computer to get any lower on cost performance. They're still counting on it to be there. So that's one force that um, led to the open power. And then the other force is, is the consumption models of IT is changing. You know, whether you look at hardware, software, just about anything. People are consuming, you know, open technologies. That's the way they want to consume technology. So, you know, with those two forces needing lots more innovation, um, the open power, our 60 innovations that we've shown here, is very important to have the whole industry innovating. And we needed to make things open so that the whole broad market segments could consume it. So uh, earlier on, uh, Callista uh, said that your motto is now 20 in 2020. 20% uh, 20 of the marketplace in 2020. Yeah, okay. So what what more do you need to do to, that's a very ambitious market, uh, uh, target. Uh, what more do you think that you need to be doing in, in the development, et cetera, to, to succeed in that? Yeah, so, you know, we, we need to we need to do a couple of things. One is, is, is we, we need to uh, continue to, sh to provide in differentiated innovation. So, um, you know, we need to give uh, the people the tools they need, the IP they need, the uh, platforms they need to innovate new things. So accelerate new workloads, um, you know, new ways to attach accelerators. And then the other thing we, of course, need to do is, is we need to uh, make, make lots and lots of developers have access to the platform. Uh, so after we provide those innovations, we've got to give broad access to it. So we're doing things... Um, with both university programs as well as um, you know, development, uh, co-development research labs to enable people to get access to these platforms. So um, what are, are some other people and myself have talked about is, is bringing the silicon closer to the software so that you are trying to reduce the path lengths, reduce the time to make up for uh, Moore's law and Amdahl's and, yeah. and, and escape from Amdahl's law. Uh, so uh, how do you see that happening? How, w what is it, what's the part of open system that makes that happen? You know, you know the, the, the bringing the silicon closer to the platform, you know, maybe don't think of it as, as changing the software stack or changing a different stack. Maybe think of it as customization. You know, hey, I need a, 
I need a, a new memory technology that has this kind of latency, this kind of bandwidth, this, oh, I want to go design something special to provide that. Okay, let's go let you design that. Um, I need this type of uh, new accelerator that has one of these, one of those. Let's make it very quick and easy to design that. So you could you know, bring the silicon closer, you know, maybe isn't a technical thing in the form of we got to change the software stack or how things work. What you need to do is let people customize. Um, you know, we're seeing, you know, this, this particular conference, we're here, you know, embedded in the GTC conference. We're seeing how, you know, custom, you know, accelerators, GPUs on the very important workload, deep learning, really a great match. And, you know, and that's bringing the silicon closer, you know, to the, uh, to the workload because the particular structure of the GPU is very, very well matched to what deep learning needs in the way of matrix multiplies, et cetera. So uh, one of the highlights of uh, Power8 was the, the CAPI interface, which mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people have, have worked with. Mm -hmm. uh, NVLink, that's a new thing that you're bringing out. Can you talk more about that? Oh Why yeah. is that, was that necessary? Uh, what does it do? Brings the silicon closer to the <laughs> workload, just <laughs> like you said. You know, NVLink, right? You know, so many, you know, important workloads um, are being accelerated by GPUs. Um, but you know what? The biggest problem we had was uh, we couldn't get the data into and out of the GPU fast enough. So what do we need to do? Well, we need to build a special piece of hardware that allows the GPU to talk to the processor's memory faster so we can get the, you know, the data in and out faster. And what we did, we brought the, you know, brought the computation much, much closer to the workload. And um, that type of customization is going to have a big impact on the industry. Um, because it's a highly differentiated way. You know, there's so many people that say, oh, if I can move things in and out of a GPU at 80 gigabytes per second instead of five, you know, I'm going to get some new workloads done. And that's what we hope to have happen. Excellent. So w what about the, uh, uh, the open part of it? Uh, as you said, you're developing some hardware, developing uh, uh, new pieces of hardware mm -hmm. itself. What about the software side? Is that an area that you're seeing collaboration in, in getting things done quicker or in new techniques? Oh, oh yeah, you know, um, we, we, we're, we're, we're providing that, uh, that open software innovation all the way up the stack, you know. One of the places right now where the industry's, you know, really struggled with open software is down there, even in the firmware level. You know, so many of these systems have to go into these large internet data centers and need to have special ways to boot and special ways to update the firmware and all that. You know, and that firmware has been closed a lot. One of the big things that we've done with our barrel eye processor we built at Rackspace is we opened up all those firmware layers. And, you know, that open software now is all available out on GitHub and people can innovate with that. You know, we're, uh, we're allowing that innovation to take place at every level. And, of course, we have our Linux and our OpenStack and our KVM, all of those out there and available. Then you get up there to the, uh, the middleware. Um, you know, we're now letting, you know, people take, you know, a lot of the open source databases, Mongo, et cetera, you know, provide acceleration of that through advanced flash techniques. And then, you know, CAPI attached flash is one of the things that we're using to speed up those databases. Great. So um, if, if, we, if we come back here in two years time, three years time, uh, 2019, what do you hope to, uh, what would you think is going to be different? What are you hoping to see uh, in that sort of time scale? You know, so, so right now, you know, what we're doing, you know, we, again, when I'm pointing to, and I know all of our viewers can't see it, but we have so many pieces of hardware out here um, that are, uh, um, you know, being built and developed. You know, and that's what we're about right now. We need to get that breadth of uh, hardware development. You know, in two, three years time scales, you know, I'm hoping now that by then now we'll get into that nether phase, which is after we get all this base hardware built, we're going to see lots and lots and lots of accelerated solutions. We have a few of them right now just started, but we need those accelerated solutions because that's ultimately going to bring the cost performance down, which is, again, our stated goal. So, you know, we'll be shifting, you know, more and more from hardware and after we get that base out there and more and more into the accelerated solutions on top of this hardware. Right. So v volume is key to uh, to success. It's the base. It's, it's the, base the base we start with. Right. Yeah. Well, thanks very much indeed to you, and thanks to uh, the Open Power Foundation, and congratulations on a, on a fantastic uh, show that you put on today. Great. So all the best, and uh, thanks very much. Thanks for watching. <laughs>